what's the first thing all of us can do to start building wealth like King Solomon? King Solomon was the wealthiest man of all times. What if there were seven secret principles that anybody can learn today, apply to their life, and create wealth, scale wealth, and pass on generational wealth for generations to come? For those of you that are new, I'm back again. It's your favorite country cousin, JT. I'm here again with Mr. William Thompson, subject matter expert for a whole lot of different things on this channel. But he's going to help us understand what are seven principles all of us can apply to our life to increase or start building wealth today. In Monopoly, they have no consumer debt. Why do you have it? For $37 one-time investment, less than a pair of shoes, in 12 weeks, we can begin to eradicate your debt. Give us 12 weeks and we're going to reduce at least $500 a month of your debt. If Monopoly doesn't have consumer debt, why do you have it? $37, we can get you free. Begin today. God bless you. All right, so first and foremost, thank you for coming back on the channel. How are you doing today? Well, I'm outstanding. How about you? Great, great. So let's get into it. What's, what's the first thing all of us can do to start building wealth like King Solomon? Well, I think the first thing, JT, we go back, I think it's over in 1 Kings chapter 3 when God went to him and three things happened immediately. God, in essence, asked him what he needed, what he wanted. Mm -hmm. The first thing that Solomon said was, I need wisdom, mm -hmm. wisdom. And when I think about wisdom in simplest terms, it's simply being able to have an extraordinary understanding of whatever you're looking at. Okay. You know, he, he didn't ask for uh, somebody's head. He didn't ask to be president. But he simply said, I want your wisdom, God, so that when I look at things, I see with my mind what people are missing with their eyes in essence. Mm -hmm. That's number one. You got to have the wisdom of God to get understanding of the things that you're about to learn. That's number one. All right. And I want to do a quick caveat before we go into point number two, because I'm so excited about these points. You guys know I'm unapologetically a faith based entrepreneur. That doesn't mean that we're perfect. We make mistakes, all of that good stuff. But I credit God for all of my success in every endeavor in life. But a question that you guys may be having that I want to address early on in this video. Do you think that we can still take lessons from over 2000 years ago and they work today? If so, why or why not? No doubt about it. I mean, particularly other people that are believers, if they believe the Bible is God's infallible word, mm -hmm. then it's a timeless book. Whether it's Old, New Te Old Testament or New Testament, it's principles. The Bible says that every scripture was given by inspiration of God and it's profitable. And if God said it, then has God changed his mind? And the answer is no. All right. So there you have it. I want to address that early on for somebody that may say, hey, this is something that happened over 2000 years ago. How can it help me today? Listen, it's, it's just as valid today as it was when it when it happened then. Now, first secret is we got to seek out wisdom. What's the second secret? The second thing he talked about that very same verse is I want wisdom. And I want knowledge. Okay. See, because in order for wisdom to really work, it requires knowledge. So Solomon's like saying, I need understanding. I need information. And when I get the information, I need the wisdom to know how to apply it. A lot of people, as you talked about on the channel, get all this knowledge, mm -hmm. but without wisdom, knowing how to practically do it when a recession, how to practically do it when tough times come. Mm -hmm. And Solomon was saying, I want to put wisdom and knowledge together. I need them if I'm going to do your will, Father. Okay. All right. And that's something that I learned today. So there's a difference between knowledge and wisdom. That's why I always tell you guys, don't be what I call information hoarders, where you'll watch a hundred YouTube videos, buy a hundred books from Borns and Nobles or online. You know everything about everything, but you ain't got nothing from it. So uh, we have to get wisdom along with our knowledge so that way we can know how to use this information to get the result that we want in our life. So, all right, what's secret number three? And the third thing he said in that very same verse was, he said, I need it because I want to lead your people about others. Anytime you're reading the word of God, prosperity comes when you're about trying to help other people. Okay. When Jesus himself came, he came as a ransom for our lives. And I think back to Job that when Job was going through a difficult time, the Bible says he prayed for his friends mm -hmm. and God turned the captivity of Job around. And so anytime you read in the Bible that you're doing something for other people, that's an automatic blessing. So we as people of Christians, it can't be about me building bigger barns, my family. But what am I doing not only to be blessed, but to position myself to be a blessing to other people? 
Okay. All right. Let, I want to go a little bit deeper on that point before we go into point number uh, four here, because I know a lot of people watching this video, you clicked on it and you watch content like this because you're saying, I need a thousand dollars to pay my bills or I need to, to eat today or whatever it is. So when you have an immediate need, in your opinion, how do I get out of my own way or out of my own mind of saying, well, I know you telling me focus on helping other people, but my stomach is growling or the landlord is going to kick me out on Friday if I don't have the money. How do you deal with that? I think the thing you have to recognize the standpoint, you then have to find your pot of oil. Okay. And then once you find your pot of oil, like the lady did in Second Kings, then the other part comes that once you do it, help somebody else do it. No doubt about it. It's hard if my stomach's growling or I'm no gas in my car, but find your pot of oil. Let God prosper that. And then how God prosper you help other people do the same thing. It's called financial discipleship. OK, that's a word that we all need to add in our vocabulary, in our word bank from this point moving forward. What's the fourth secret? The fourth. And now we get to things that we really do a lot of direct talking on the various channels. The other thing I'm going to find is found in First Kings chapter 10 versus uh, I'm sorry, First Kings 10, yeah, 22 through 29. It talks about Solomon was a business owner. Solomon had an international business, JT. He was going bringing in spices, bringing in luxury goods, bringing in gold. He had an international business, even as a young man. So just like we teach about business ownership and we teach about not just in your little county or your state, but literally worldwide. Solomon had an international business. He had low tiered products. He had very expensive products. All of that he did because he understood the power of entrepreneurship. All right. Oh, so that's something that I mean, lots of times when we go to church and you might have been going to church your whole life. But the, the minister, the pastor, the whoever uh, the person is up there, they'll they'll tell us about Solomon. But we, we tend not to get the entrepreneurial side of Solomon, uh, at least in small little country churches like where I'm from. Right. So you guys let us know in the comment section if it's different wherever you're located. Right. So now we're on, if I'm not mistaken, secret number five. That's it, my friend. Number five. Now let's talk about real estate. Again, okay. look in 1 Kings chapter 9, Solomon was a builder. Mm -hmm. He built the temple of God. He built his house. He built palaces. He built more than any other king. So he really focused in on not only just residential real estate, but also commercial real estate. Mm -hmm. And please read 1 Kings chapter 9 because David, his father, uh, laid the foundation for Solomon and Solomon bought and built a lot of real estate. And I tell you, JT, I'm not into pretty much your flip. I love new construction. So I love what Solomon did. He did everything new construction because I believe the return on investment, in my opinion, and I'm not the expert in real estate, I think it's better on new construction and you don't have to deal with those toilets, those sinks, et cetera. So Solomon did new construction, new construction based residential as well as commercial. All right. All right. And before we get into uh, point number six, are we at six or seven? I think we're at six now. All right. Before we get into point number six, just for clarity, um, I, I want to go a little bit deeper on a point that we made earlier, um, and that is your pot of oil. So we hear uh, Mr. Thompson talk about that quite a bit here on his channel, because I know some of you all are watching this and you're saying financially right now, well, OK, I, I'm not that person that is going to be broke or homeless immediately, but I don't have the credit or the money to do the real estate or the credit or the money to do the business. So I, I really wanna take a, another step back because like I said, I don't want these videos to just be like any other YouTube channel that you can watch and they just give you a list of things to do and then they just jump on to the next subject matter. I want you to be able to watch this video, get uh, tangible nuggets that you can apply to your life. So that being said, if you didn't have a whole lot of money, what does finding your uh, pot of oil look like present day. Can you give us an example of that? It is. And I think back, there are about eight things that everybody has. Okay. Uh, I think number one, everybody has credit. Like you said before, it may be bad credit. Mm -hmm. But even if you have bad credit, if you can work to get that good credit, there are many ways to leverage your good credit. Mm -hmm. Everybody has time. Yep. And over and over again, they have time and or access to social media. Mm -hmm. 
And if you properly use your time, like we talked about before, you can waste time like you waste money or you can invest time that brings multiplication. That's something else. Learn how to invest time. The other thing, everybody has relationships. And I believe from a natural and a biblical perspective, many times when people were going through difficult times, like in Second Kings chapter four, the four leopard men, mm -hmm. they got together with their friends, their financial empowerment team, and they begin to bounce ideas off one another. And as we always say hundreds of times over, money is nothing but an idea. And because you lack money is because you lack ideas. Get with friends who are hungry like you are, who are teachable, who know that God has more in life for them and come together and spend some time instead of watching excessive TV and sleep. Just I recently had my very first six figure, not a year, not month. We have those consistently and started having those years ago. My very first six figure day. For those of you that follow me across social media, you saw me unbox my award, talk to you guys about it. Uh, for those of you that don't believe me, I'm not even here to make you believe me. I'm just here to tell you how I did it. I was able to do it by getting organized and staying organized. The year that I made six figures in a day for the first time, I was operating off of a planner. Real inexpensive traditional planner. But the issue with that traditional planner was that it didn't have enough room and it didn't have enough categories for me to organize the type of life that I live as a seven figure entrepreneur. I had to have a planner, then I also had to have notebooks. And while it was efficient for a while, it became frustrating trying to keep up with what notebook had what in it and compare that to the planner. It was just a whole headache, you guys. So what I did in order to get organized and stay organized was create my own planner, which I call the Genius Planner. The Genius Planner is by far one of the most detailed planners ever created. It has all of the sections needed. If you're a content creator, if you're an entrepreneur that wants to get organized, stay organized, and know what to focus on, that will make you the most money. I know that sounds crazy, but I pretty much took everything that I needed in one planner, and because it didn't exist, I couldn't find it on the internet, I put it in a planner. If you're looking to get organized and stay organized to grow your business, you can secure your copy of my Genius Planner, link underneath today's video. And now let's get back to today's action. Harvesting ideas, and I think that's the starting point. And just one more quick one. It goes back to their passion or gifting. Mm -hmm. Everybody has some type of skill, a hobby, a passion, or something that makes them come alive. So that's why I say, JT, a perfected passion will produce prosperity. Take time to perfect that thing that makes you come alive. All right, so hey, for th those people out there that may be looking at your checking account, looking at your credit score, and saying, how is somebody like me gonna do it, right? Replay this video as many times as it takes for this thing to click in your mind so you can understand that you too can find success. What's the seventh and last secret that we could take from Kings? Well, actually, we, I miscounted. We do have two quick other okay. ones. So we're gonna say number six here is gonna be diversification of investing. Okay. In Ecclesiastes, about chapter 11, Solomon says, in essence, don't put all your eggs in one bed. See, we thought mama said it first. Solomon addressed it. He said, diversify with your investments to seven or eight things. So you may invest in a business. You may invest in intellectual property. You may invest in stocks. You may invest in options. So he's telling us to diversify. Don't have all your money coming from one source. So you check out Ecclesiastes 11 and you will see because he said you never know which one's going to succeed and or which ones may not be as productive right now. Solomon understood that everything we tried, everything's not going to work, but some things will. OK. All right. And you said we have one more after that. Oh, and the last one, JT, this is new to me. We know we talk about intellectual properties here. We talk about seminars. Mm -hmm. We talk about courses and ebooks. Solomon did that. When you look back to Queen of Sheba, yeah. because Solomon's wisdom was so great, Queen of Sheba came to see him and she paid him money. Mm -hmm. And then over in First Kings chapter four, about verse 34, the Bible says how people and kings 
They sought Solomon out. Solomon had webinars that were live seminars and kings and people would come to Solomon and pay him like we do on our webinars. Mm -hmm. And also Solomon also had written materials. He wrote the book of Ecclesiastes. He wrote the book of Proverbs as well as he wrote the book of Song of Solomon. So Solomon dealt with relationships in Proverbs, father to son. In Song of Solomon, he dealt with relationships, husband and wife. So Solomon had intellectual properties before I even knew the word existed. So again, the assets we talk about, real estate he had, investments he had, intellectual properties, as well as real estate. All of that plus wisdom, plus knowledge, and a desire to help others. And that's why I believe God made Solomon one of the wealthiest people, if not the wealthiest one ever, because he had a kingdom perspective. All right, I got two more questions for you. Okay. First question is going back to you said diversification. When should, in your opinion, somebody diversify? Should they day one, I want to do real estate, uh, intellectual property, some sort of business and stock investing, or when should you diversify? I would diversify when that item becomes an asset. And I define an asset as a retired CPA that it's making you money with little to none of your involvement. Mm -hmm. So let's say if I start with, let's say, investing in the stock market and I get very comfortable in selling puts and I'm making two and three thousand dollars a month initially selling puts and I have a good system. Then it may be good to diversify to look at maybe doing a, an ebook, etc. But I definitely want the item to be able to produce cash flow from you monthly with little to none of your involvement. All right. And the last question I have for you is a lot of you all have been watching the series of videos that I've been doing with Thompson for quite a while now. And you may be saying, hey, look, I want to work directly with him. I want to ask him questions myself. I want to learn in a more intimate setting directly from him and really pick his brain and find tangible ways I can get out of debt, start making money, all of those great things. Uh, what is the best way for somebody that wants to connect with you directly to connect with you? Hey, man, great question. I'm glad you asked that. We have upcoming something called a five day challenge. And man, I, I've never done it before, but I've studied what you've done. I've seen the success and I'm excited for five days. We're going to have one on one with you folks, guys. We're going to bring you together on, on the webinar and I'm going to walk you through one of the things that has caused me to be very successful in selling puts. I'm going to walk you through and give you an analysis on what a put is, where to find it at, how to build generational wealth as well as how to create cash flow for five days. You're talking about close to 10 hours of time that I'm going to share with you and give you my number one way that I'm currently making money that anybody can do. It's going to be live. It's going to be real. And we're going to give you homework and we're going to show you exactly what you can do from the comforts of your home to create massive cash flow and to build generational wealth. Five days exciting time, life changing. All right. And no matter when you're watching this video, there'll be a link underneath this video with an up to date link, because as long as this continues to add value to your life, we're going to keep this going. So no matter when you're watching it, don't worry about the upload date. Click that link down below. Learn from somebody that has a skill. I tell you guys all the time, you ask me, JT, if I have X amount of money, what would you do? Or JT, where do I start? And I tell people all the time, start with the skill. Right. Once we have a skill, then we can figure out how to properly package and market that skill in the open market. But if you're somebody that has no idea where to start, tap in with a subject matter expert that can teach you a skill that you can use. Teach your kids, grandkids, nieces, nephews, friends, whoever you want to. And then that's where you start to start building real wealth. I tell you guys all the time that I believe everybody should have at least two income streams. If you love your nine to five job, you're going to die doing it. Cool. Right. But I never want you to be at the mercy of a supervisor can change or the company can sell to another company. And now your life gets more difficult or it just changes in whatever way. Or if you have a business, you may already be an entrepreneur. What if the market changes and now it's uh, harder for you to sell your products or services because the economy is doing uh, 
bad or whatever can happen. So by having at least two income streams, however many you can manage, you can go beyond that. This allows you to be able to be what I like to call evergreen. So I want you to be an evergreen entrepreneur so you make money no matter what the economy is doing, no matter what's happening externally and the politicians are telling you, you're still fine, you're still able to take care of yourself, your family, and live the lifestyle that I believe God intended you to live. So if you wanna tap into that, right, learn from Mr. Thompson, click the link, get into that five-day training, ask all of the questions, learn this skill and start making money. Until next time, so much to stay hustling. JT Automations, I'm gone.